And now, it's time to drop your pants and do something for Bob. You see, you must first be willing to believe anything. Once you've done that, you can begin excluding data. Which is so easy. It's what the con has you do before you learn. Forgetting is always easier than discovering. There are forces helping you to forget. If you have great powers of concentration, and you begin to think of a fictitious person as if he existed in all the detail of a real person, that person, or the bodily image of it, may materialize so solidly that you can't get rid of it. That almost never happens in America because it is not expected. However, it happens in Tibet a great deal, and the ambulatory externalized hallucinations that follow llamas about are called tulpas. If you look for long into a savior, then the savior will also look into you. Take care in your invocations. Human anguish is a very high-priced drug among the elder gods. When you cut off their supply, they will go elsewhere for their fix. Yeah, buddy. I will read now from the Prescriptures 367. And my mad prophets, the Heoka, whose powers come from the thunder beings, shall be transformed over men. They shall be the unmaskers and the doors to the new Jerusalem. For they beareth the pipe, which is my sign, and are sons of the image of my chosen one, who is a fool. You can't let these spooks spook you. Face it, you've got one thing they haven't got, a body. What the hell is a disincarnate entity going to do to you? A particularly violent poltergeist might throw plates around the room, or some UFO knots might stick a probe up your keister, or a Bigfoot might let the air out of your camper tires and leave a stink. But there are no recorded instances of any of these manifestations actually killing anybody. Well, not many anyway. But lots of people have been killed by those who believed what the voices in well, their Well, we needn't told fear them. the apparitions, energy demons, and disembodied whisperers. We certainly don't need the distraction from the blurry black light of Bob. Whereas some fools may actively seek to open their minds to signals from higher thought forms to practice divination, heighten their ESP, invoke spirits, and cast spells, etc., etc., etc. Many subgenii were born doing those things involuntarily at all times. Our brains feel like car radios on scan mode, and we have to deliberately close ourselves off from all the etheric input by building up a kind of psychic static in our heads to jam their signals and drown out the voices. There is an inherent danger here. And because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens due to the crisis that is even now developing, this radio station will remain on the air day and night. This station and hundreds of other radio and TV stations throughout this part of the country are pooling their resources through an emergency network hookup to keep you informed of all developments. At this hour, we must repeat. These are the facts as we know them. Jehovah One is the only major primordial deity now actively soliciting praise and requesting fertility rites. The Church of the Subgenius 
stands with the fighting Jesus, the swinging Buddha, Muhammad the Avenger, and all the other space detectives from benevolent alien races who came to defy the Elder Gods. Jehovah One, you see, is not alone in his cosmic meddling. Earth has been inhabited nonstop for millions of years by hundreds of different races of aliens from space both benevolent and hostile. Have you ever noticed that no two UFO pictures show the same hubcap? Now this creates a tremendous opportunity for those who are familiar with the short duration personal savior doctrine as preached by my short duration personal savior, Bob Dobbs. You see, it is a limiting madness to accept any singular personal savior, even Dobbs, as a permanent guide. Even the old ones slumber, and sometimes your major deity of choice might just need to give it a rest and allow someone else to take over the shift. Bob's greatest invention is this concept of short duration personal saviors, or shorter preserves in Tibetan. The true sub accepts into his heart as his own personal savior, anyone or anything with which he happens to be impressed at the moment. Shorter persavs change from hour to hour, from whim to whim. It could be the hero of a cool movie you just saw, the author of a book, a bottle of Thunderbird, Old English, or Magnum, a good pal, a dog, lava. Not professional gurus you are locked into believing, but temporary ones, according to the needs of the moment. They change so fast, it never gets embarrassing. You aren't inclined to proselytize them off on disinterested others who will later laugh at you. You know that their effects will wear off in minutes, although the very idea is unthinkable while well, under the influence of deity. One need not mention them at all. Now, Jehovah One and a handful of other cosmic entities are actively rebelling against the now-sleeping Elder Gods and are attempting to brutalize humans into a swift revolution to create a race sufficiently developed to aid them on the day when the Elder Gods awaken. They are, in essence, creating an army of super soldiers for the explicit purpose of fighting a war against primordial deities. So, interacting with the gods is not necessarily recommended against. It can be hard, it can be rough, it can be very trying, but it can be very rewarding in manners both hallucinatory and supernatural, as well as financial, physical, and emotional. I don't know, it could be anything. But, um, the, uh... Short duration personal savior phenomena creates this incredible opportunity for variety in your life, both of perspective and of potential. Yes, the word of Bob brings instant good luck, both material and hallucinatory. Although the least scrutable or approachable of all subgenii, he is by far the most frequently invoked of all of our uncountable short-duration personal saviors. Yes, there is some debate whether he even is a subgenius. But Bob Dobbs brought this to us and has more wisdom for us to be discussed in further broadcasts. I'd like to do a little housekeeping now. We've got about a minute left on the program here today. It's uh, important that I point out that no insects were harmed in the production of this video. 
I wandered into my kitchen. The Lazarus bug, as I have named him, was floating in a dirty coffee mug, and I videotaped it. Then I blanketed him and soaked up the water, took his carcass, and returned it to the plant enclosure that I have on my windowsill. I took a few pictures. Those were posted at the beginning of the video. I walked away for 10 minutes. When I returned, he was nowhere to be found. I've seen him wandering around my apartment since then, but uh, he is very much alive. Remember, always take a second god with you in case one burns out. This has been Pope Narabbas, Reverend Starman, Church of the Subgenius. Have a nice night.